All right, welcome back. Now, um, for over a year now, we've been talking about the coronavirus, COVID-19, and all of the issues that have come with it and how the world has completely changed uh, since uh, we, we got the virus uh, spreading across the world. But in all of that noise, I mean, there's still a deadly killer that continues to um, sort of boggle the mind of everybody and not, we still don't have a cure for cancer. And uh, on the 4th of February was World Cancer Day. So because of, you know, the COVID and all of the issues, uh, st stuff like that gets drowned out. But cancer is still a major killer. And um, we're going to be talking about that, of course. The theme for World Cancer Day this year, you know, is I am and I will. And um, we're going to be talking about, you know, the fact that a lot of people uh, still die from cancer. I think in 2018, an estimated 9.5 million people, 9.5 million people died of cancer or cancer-related illnesses. So I have you with me, Dr. Emmanuel Okafor, to help us talk about this. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Thank you yeah. very much. So, I mean, cancer is one of those things that we've been talk we talk about and uh, we've had in our hands, uh, on our hands for so long. Um, this year, uh, World Cancer Day was on the 4th of February. Um, like I said, it's been, it was drowned out, unfortunately, because there seems to be this monster that's, that's raging ac across the world. But it doesn't make cancer any less deadly. Um, where are we now with, with this conversation? Are people still very aware of, you know, what this disease is, what it can do, especially here in Nigeria, and, and how are we doing with handling it here? Well, uh, first off, thank you for the opportunity yeah. to be on this program. <laughs> And um, where we are in, with cancer in Nigeria now, um, so far, the awareness isn't optimal as we would like it to be. People know the name cancer. For example, even if I walk to the marketplace and say somebody has cancer, it will still draw the attention of people and be like, oh, cancer, is, the person is going to die. That's the first thought that comes yeah. to their mind. So um, information concerning it is not optimal in our population, in Nigeria especially. And yeah. uh, we would like for that narrative to change, to yeah. be honest. Yes. Why, why, is, why has it been so... I know it's not necessarily your answer yeah. or a question for you, but I mean, you're in the medical space. Why has it been so hard to crack, and I'm not talking about cure now, yeah. even to find what causes it. Yeah. You know, today we hear don't eat this, the next day don't smoke this, the next day, oh, please drink this, and yes. don't drink this. There seems to be so much um, confusion with regards to how to even approach this disease. Yeah. Why is that? Um, the main reason why that is so is because the root of cancer goes back to the codons. That's the instructions in our genes. Now, genes are units that give instructions as to how our cells are formed, and cells being the building blocks of life that make up biological entities. So when we have issues that originate from the codon, the instruction itself that forms the DNA, um, the information we have as at now in technology is limited in what we can do. But we have made... Um, much progressed as it concerns uh, prevention in the first place, which is our target. We want to prevent it. That is why you would hear, don't eat this, eat this. We want to encourage certain kind of diets. We want to encourage exercise like doctors have been hammering since the beginning of time. Even though it seems basic, uh, these are the things that can make a real difference. Um, yeah. In, in, in the human body. Yeah, and I know uh, it, it's very scary for yes. a lot of people, and, and I say that cause, because there's a cancer basically of everything. Yes. You know, anything can be, and children are even born with cancer, which makes people wonder, but this child is brand new, hasn't eaten or done anything. What did it do to deserve cancer of yes. the eyes or something, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and for a lot of people, there seems to be very slow progress being made with regards to research. You just said now that we've had some advancements. So I'll maybe just point some of those out for me. Because I'm thinking, for as long as I've known, if someone has cancer, all I hear is chemotherapy or chop something yeah. off for the person to survive. Yes. What have we done beyond that? Okay. I'm going to start off so that our audience who may not know very much about cancer, may have a general idea. Yes. So when we keep talking, they understand better. So what happens in cancer is that there's an abnormal growth of the cells um, that build the body. So in the body, we have these genes, which are units that give instructions. So they say when to stop growth and when to start growth. So what happens in cancer is that some of those genes that are supposed to say stop growth get suppressed. And then the ones that say start growth, their instructions get changed and they abnormally grow. So um, what we've been doing majorly uh, for many years is to just give drugs that target um, 
rapidly multiplying cells because okay. these cells are rapidly multiplying. So if we give drugs that target it, it's likely to hit it. But it also causes side effects that we see like the hair loss because the hair, the cells that produce the hair are rapid dividing cells also and leads to other complications. Yeah. So what we are trying to do now, the new technology, as you said, um, is to try and develop, we are developing vaccines first off that help to prevent virus. There are some certain viruses, some cancers that we know are associated with uh, certain viruses. For example, there is almost no chance of you having cervical cancer, which is one of the major cancers we have in Nigeria, if you do not have the human papilloma virus, HPV virus. So we created um, vaccines that target this virus and prevent you from having it in the first place. So no HPV, no cervical cancer for you. So we just go ahead to make even drugs that target um, the cancer cells. So no more just drugs for fast dividing cells. We have drugs that can ta target the exact proteins in the cancer cells so that um, the side effects are less. So we're making much uh, progress yeah. in, that, in that regard. So, so speaking specifically about Nigeria now yes. and, and, you know, looking at how we are here, first of all, healthcare scares a lot of people <laughs> when you think about, you know, having to yes. be in a hospital. What I'm talking about lifestyle, yes. you know, what does an average Nigerian need to do, you yes. know, to leave? Um, like you said, we know some of the basics. Oh, don't smoke. Yes. Oh, try not to eat, try yes. to eat organic food. Yes. You know, drink a lot of water. All of these Excellent. things sound very simple. Yes. But yes. Uh, at the same time, we live in a country where a lot of these things are not necessarily easy. It's, yeah. it's a tough space, you yeah. know, to, to survive in Nigeria. What does it, an average Nigerian need to do, first of all, to be able to live a healthy, hopefully cancer-free life? I know there are a lot of these also hereditary and all of that, but what sort of things should a Nigerian be looking at? So it's, it's back to basics, really, when it comes to this. When we say no smoking, it's lifestyle adjustments that, that they have to make. When we say no smoking, they have to look into it and consider the risk benefits, the risk and benefits in quotes of smoking. And with smoking, uh, when we say smoke, smoking, people think majorly lung cancer. Smoking is a risk factor for, for basically all cancers, a whole lot of cancers. Um, so it's about modifying their lifestyle, eating food with proper uh, food with fruits and vegetables because colorectal cancer is also a major cancer in our environment. And aside that, like we said, basic exercise, walking out, trying to move your body and taking alcohol in moderation. Now, we're not saying you shouldn't take any alcohol at all. But we're saying maybe go easy before you take five bottles at a time of beer. So that is pretty much what we're looking at. And then aside that, in preventing um, cancer in people, one major thing also is early um, recognition of the symptoms and for them to screen ahead of time. So we tell women that they should regularly do the self-breast examinations. There are lots of videos out there to show them how to do. We tell the men, once you're up to 40, 45 years, go and get your prostate checked. Because if we ask the average Nigerian, how many of you have gotten your prostate checked before? Basically, nobody. How many of you have had uh, a look at your colon before to know if you're at risk of colorectal cancer? Basically, yeah. nobody. So these preemptive steps are actually the way forward. They are pretty basic, but they are life-saving as well. Yeah. Well, I, and I was going to get to that, and thank yes. you for leading me there. Now I'm talking about you know early detection and all of that. Yes. Um, but unfortunately, cancer for a lot of people is a very expensive. Yes. Um, ailment, yes. you know, to have. And we hear that about seven out of every 10 um, deaths from cancer happen in low or middle income households mm -hmm. uh, or people. Mm -hmm. So people who don't have money almost certainly yes. die because yes. they can't afford the treatments that mm -hmm. come with it. So is, where do we, how do we get to a point where we are talking about, you know, it being not such a burden financially. Is it mm -hmm. ever going to get there? Because for something that's been around for so long, mm -hmm. I mean, malaria has been around so long, mm -hmm. people seem to find a way to, okay, I get certain mm -hmm. pills and I, I'm able to, mm -hmm. HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. uh, medication was, has been subsidized. Yes. Why is cancer still up there? Well, uh, the major issue we have with cancer is, like I said, the funding for the research, for cancer research is massive. So the amount of money that goes into developing new products to treat cancer is super expensive and the pharmaceutical companies have to recover their money somehow. So that is where uh, we have private donors and also governmental institutions to help subsidize um, some of these uh, medications and some of these treatments. Some of them are already ongoing at the moment. Some drugs are gotten at a subsidized fee. Some uh, treatment modalities are also gotten at a subsidized fee. So all we have to do is just to amp our efforts 
um, there until it gets to a point where some of those drugs are even cheaper because, like I said, the pharmaceutical companies have recouped a lot of money that they spent yeah. in the research in the first place. I mean, place. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, so I don't <laughs> want to get into the pharmaceuticals and okay. all of that. But I mean, because for a lot of people, it's like HIV AIDS came, you know, mm -hmm. became a big deal. A few years down the line, mm -hmm. it's cheaper. Yes, to definitely. leave with it. Yeah. With cancer, it's weird how you know it, it literally wrecks people's homes financially, yes. and and you know you almost can't get a headway out of it. Mm -hmm. how, where are we with regards to treatments? Cancer centers mm -hmm. in Nigeria and all of that. Are, are we? Are you comfortable with mm -hmm. where we are in Nigeria with regards to? being able to help people who are diagnosed with this? Uh, comfortable, yes and no. Um, I say yes because we have brilliant oncologists in Nigeria at the moment. Um, we have cutting-edge technology in some centers. But then no, because we have 200 million people in Nigeria. And then how many centers are there? How many oncologists are there? How much data do we have about you know, cancer? We can't influence policy much. We can't create policies uh, through the law and by government to influence maybe helping outcome of cancer, cancer patients if we don't have data to back up what we are coming with. So there's a lot left to be done. There's a lot left to be done. Exactly, exactly. And especially also in terms of, like you said earlier, funding. A lot of people are dying not just because the chemotherapy regimen is there ready for them, but the sheer money they have to spend in a country where the minimum wage is about 33,000 naira, and you have one drug, some medications, one vial is going into the hundreds of thousands. That is a year's salary for some of them. So these are the challenges that we face. And also early detection is a challenge because um, we'll find a majority of our people like, um, chest, I will use the quote, chesting it, or like <laughs> enduring it until yeah. it gets pretty bad before the present because they are afraid of spending money at first. And then the money they are afraid of spending, they are spending way much more than that in the end. So yeah. these are some of the um, issues that we have here in Nigeria. What are some of the biggest cancer cancers we have here in Nigeria? Okay, um, for the females, yeah. uh, we have breast cancer. Breast cancer and cervical cancer are the major those make up the bulk for the yeah. females. And then um, for the males, we have prostate cancer and uh, colorectal cancer. What you have mentioned, by the way, is the liver cancer and uh, the lung cancers as well. And liver, I'm mentioning liver cancer because there's something we can immediately do about... Um, which is? Which is, first off, uh, reducing the intake of what we call abo over here. You know, traditional herbal medication. Okay. But the, <laughs> some, some of them are pretty bad because... Um, you know, some of our people, we don't even look at NAVDAC numbers or registrations or anything. And some of them have very uh, liver toxic materials inside yeah. them. We have had several cases like that uh, where this cancer would never have happened if this person's liver was not so much damaged by um, some alcohol, especially alcohol-based um, herbal concoctions and all that. But aside that, of course, that's not the only thing that can lead to liver cancer. There's the hepatitis B and C as well. Brilliant thing is that we have hepatitis B vaccination as well. So some of these, these are uh, practicals that you can, by yourself, sit down and eliminate the cancers you could possibly have in your life. You can actually do that for yourself. Um, you can just say, I'm going to get the hepatitis uh, B vaccination. I'm going to get the um, HPV, like I said earlier, for cervical cancer. I know that this, there is almost no chance of these things happening later on to you with the proper lifestyle um, habits. So, yeah. So basically... Stop drinking that book, <laughs> like you said. <laughs> so check yourself. So because I'm trying to, the ones yes. you've listed now, prostate, yes. breast, liver, yes. uh, that's and cervical cancer yes. that you've listed are things that can be prevented. Yes. And Definitely. basically just living a healthy life. Yes. So with regards to um, men with a prostate cancer, um, even the prostate check itself is mm -hmm. not cheap as okay. well. And we're, I, I'm trying to get to medical tourism now and how... Okay. In spite of that, you seem to have a lot of people who are flying out. So India has become a very popular destination yeah. for a lot of people now to go treat themselves there. Why is it flight tickets and hospital bills and hotel accommodation cheaper yes. than treating yourself here? Is it a question of quality here or expense? It's not necessarily cheaper to go to India to get treatment. Um, the truth of the matter is that right now where India is in advancement in their cancer care, they offer some services that we do not have at the moment in Nigeria. 
So a lot of that, um, a lot of the migration there for medical treatment is due to that fact. But there's also the thing of trust, um, because unfortunately, uh, many Nigerians have actually lost trust in our health infrastructure. So they want to be assured um, that they are getting the best. So they fly abroad. Even though here we have some of the best doctors and um, some of the best in some places, the major issue is that these are exceptions and not the rule, where we have uh, brilliant centers that can take care of their oncological problems but they end up traveling. So it might be more expensive for them, but many times they're satisfied in their heart that, okay, they're getting so, so, so quality of care. But rest assured, um, there's a lot that we can do in Nigeria here. We may not be able to do everything, but there's a lot that we can yeah. do. Just on the final note now, because you had said that, you know, trying to eat healthy, eat organically, organically and all of that. We also hear the argument that processed food can be dangerous mm -hmm. for a lot of people, things in cans, things in packs. There's also the argument that Agbu, for example, is organic. <laughs> yeah. You know, organic. it's naturally, you know, brewed. Yes. You know, so how do you convince the average guy and tell them this is not healthy? You know, and what's... What is organic but unhealthy? So that I'm making sense. So that is the part what we are trying to work on on educating the people because, um, like you said, some even come, will come to the hospital and tell you, uh, my grandfather used to make a bowl, my father used to make a bowl, and they say and they lived forever. Exactly, and they lived for so long. So the danger with these things is that um, because there is no regulation, there is no inspection. Some of them may have the active ingredients that might cause a change. And so you see that this person took Abo and maybe the headache that they used to have, the person is no more having it. But then the content, the proportion of that, you know, in, in medicine we have dosages, different dosages. And there's a dose that um, an ingredient will reach that it will cause adverse effects. And you may not know at that time. Just like some of them that are predisposed to, uh, some patients that are predisposed to not cancer now, let's say something like ulcer, peptic uh, ulcer. And then they take, these ones we see it regularly, they take this abo once again. And some of these abo have um, NSAID, okay, this is a medical term. I'm going to go and say um, anti-inflammatory medications in quotes. The major ingredient in those kind of drugs, um, they have it in abundant amounts inside that small abo. So once the person takes it, it's like all, all hell breaks loose in their abdomen. And they don't even know what is going on until maybe they see blood in their stool or until maybe they see vomiting. So um, a big part uh, that we have to play is educating the people and convincing them and winning their trust that we're on their side. We're trying to make sure that they even live longer, like uh, want to extend the average life expectancy of Nigerians and uh, do our very best for them because that is, that is what we work for and that is what we train for. In, one sentence, in yeah. one sentence, if you can, are you optimistic mm -hmm. about, you know, where we're headed with cancer and cancer research and, you know, treating and all of that? I definitely am optimistic concerning because, you see, the field of uh, oncology, which is cancer uh, studies, is ever expanding. Like I, like I said earlier, there is um, so much that be, can be done. It's a whole new field uh, where new medications are coming in new uh, methods of treatment are coming in. So I am totally optimistic and we have very capable doctors even here in Nigeria who are advancing it. We may not be hearing of them now but many people are doing work um, on the back end to ensure that the ones that have cancer now we are taking very good care of them and that cancer is not a death sentence. I have to make that very clear that it is not, there is so much that we can do especially with early detection. Right. So um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Emmanuel Okafo. And I'm rooting for all of you in the medical space and, you know, the research space because this needs to be in the past at some point. And Definitely. Not, like you said, it shouldn't be a dead sentence. It's Thanks for joining time. us. Thank you very much. We'll come back right after this break. Don't go away.